When you get a UFO sighting where the object behaves in a way that defies uh, conventional physics, defies the way that an airplane would move, um, and when you can see the object, it's not just a point of light, but there is some uh, size there, some actual shape you can see, and that thing isn't shaped like an airplane, well, then it's not a secret aircraft. It's Whatever it is, it's just something totally bizarre and strange. An example of that would be a sighting that occurred in uh, January of 2000 near St. Louis on the Illinois side of the river. This huge triangular object was moving fairly low to the ground, kind of zipping around the area. It's not Venus or Mars or whatever object was up at the time. It's not another aircraft that was up at the time. Well, gee, if it's not a conventional object, what else could it be? My name is Melvin Noel, and I'm a part-time truck driver, and, and I own this miniature golf course and also the go-kart track out here. That certain morning, I happened to look over into the sky to the northeast, and I seen a very, very bright light up there, like a very bright star. And then I said, well, that's moving. And I just stood there and watched it as what I was doing, and it was just coming down out of the sky real slow, and no noise, just quiet, and I couldn't see no wings or nothing, just floating right through the midair up there. And I thought, well, if I don't tell nobody that I've seen something go over town tonight, nobody will believe me tomorrow. Mel drove his truck to the Highland, Illinois Police Department to report an unidentified flying object heading toward the neighboring town of Lebanon. Well, this is a huge call from Highland PD. Reference to a truck driver just stopped in and said there was a flying object in the area of Lebanon. It's a joke, right? No, this is not a joke. That's why not. Ed Barton was the first police officer to respond to the call. Be advised, there's a very bright white light east of town, and it keeps changing colors. It's heading westbound now. Matter of fact, the shadow also looks like they can probably see it by now. 2550, I see something that I'm going to take it. At 4.23 a.m., police officer David Martin saw the UFO over a field on the outskirts of Shiloh. I happened to look over and saw this large floating object that was just moving very slowly. It was probably about a football field in length. It had three large bright lights lighting up the sky underneath it. I honestly don't know what it was that I saw other than I know it wasn't a plane or a helicopter or a blimp. Police reported the object over Lebanon, over Shiloh, over Milstad, over Dupo. Detective Mark Lopino says he saw it as it approached O'Fallon, Illinois. I was driving eastbound on Highway 50 when I see the object, the UFO, if you will. I first thought it was probably a bunch of helicopters flying in some type of formation. As I drew closer to it, I saw it start to cross over the roadway. It was unlike anything I have ever seen before. You could see the lights, and you could see something that they were attached to, and it was shaped like a, a triangle. I'm freaking out. I'm like, what, what the heck is this? So I continue, and it's going over these trees. By the time I get here toward the left turn lane, I duck into the left, left turn lane here, and I stop right about here. I wanted to listen to see if I could hear any type of engine noise. I could not hear anything. I tried to look again at the UFO, and it had already gone behind these trees. I put it in reverse to back up a couple seconds to see if I could reacquire it again. By the time I backed up and tried to see it, it had moved at least a mile away, if not further. That quick, I was just astonished. I didn't know what to say. I was speechless. Six people, including five police officers, saw an object over southern Illinois that night. They all describe what they saw as a massive triangular object flying in total silence. It very well could be an uh, alien ship. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess that's why they call them unidentified objects. You know, I don't know. I do know that it wasn't a plane that I've ever seen before. Am I saying it was uh, alien spacecraft? 
No, I'm not saying it was a military craft. I'm saying I can't identify the object and it's an unidentified flying object by its very definition. In the middle of the Cold War, across remote stretches of the northern United States, the Air Force kept ballistic missiles and B-52 bombers on constant alert. On the night of October the 24th, 1968, at Minot Air Force Base in Minot, North Dakota, Airman First Class Mike O'Connor was dispatched to make a routine repair at one of the missile sites. We made our turn to come down the road to the missile site and out of the corner of my eye, I observed a what I thought was a farmer's yard light, but it looked awful bright. Uh, as we proceeded down the road, the object appeared to lift off the ground and parallel us down the road until we came to the missile site, at which point uh, we got out of the truck and it just kind of hovered there. Staff Sergeant Bill Smith was in charge of security for 10 nuclear missiles. That night, he reported seeing strange objects. These objects would rise, they would speed up, they would slow it down, they would hover, they would dart very quickly one way or the other. We were just not really sure that these were things that we could explain. The Minot Control Tower diverted a B-52 to investigate. Captain Brad Runyon was the B-52's co-pilot. The air traffic controller asked us if we would mind going out to this one area and uh, looking for something. I was curious and I said, well, what are we looking for? And they said, well, uh, you'll know it if you find it. The navigator on the B-52, Captain Patrick McCaslin, suddenly identified an object on his radar screen. I saw a return, faint one sweep, Right the next, large, off our right wing, three o'clock, at about three miles. And at that point, I asked the radar navigator to turn on the camera, which would then take pictures of whatever was on the radar screen. These pictures of the radar screen show the object flying in formation with the B-52. This thing was climbing out with us and maintaining the same heading we were. That was unusual. But what really watered my eyes, when was it when this thing backed away and allowed us to turn inside of it? When the object suddenly disappeared from the radar, the bomber turned back to find it. Co-pilot Runyon was the first to spot what appeared to be a glowing craft hovering near the ground. When things like that are happening, it seems like time just stands still. My estimate overall object was uh, a minimum of 200 feet in diameter and it was hundreds of feet long. It had a metallic cylinder attached to another section that uh, was shaped like a crescent moon. I felt that this uh, crescent moon part was probably the uh, command center. I tried to look inside the thing but all I could see was a yellow glow. At that point, I was fairly sure that, that I was looking at an alien spaceship, something that had come here from some other planet other than uh, Earth. Co-pilot Runyon and the other crew members of the B-52 reported their sighting when they returned to the base. According to Blue Book's investigation, the crew of the B-52 and 16 witnesses on the ground said they saw a UFO that night. In its final report, Blue Book concluded that they were all seeing stars. None of those pilots saw a star. I know those pilots. I know what their training was. I know uh, how many stars they'd seen in the course of their careers, and they were not looking at a star. It bothers me that Blue Book blew it off. I don't think this... this uh, incident has ever been adequately explained.